Well, here we go. How's it going, guys? It is May 5th. Our live stream today is going to be focused around a brand new dubbing. How's it going, guys? Good to see you guys. Hello to YouTube. Hello, Instagram. Um, just to get this thing started, we are going on with our brand new dubbing we've come out with. This is our Scud Licious Dubbing. Um, we really wanted to get our own Scud dubbing on the market. So what we did is we really came out with um, a really nice blend that's got some length to it, but it's not too long. Uh, we've got actually have three different rainbows in this. Um, we're going to go over a couple different patterns tonight just to kind of mix things up. And uh, let's get started. Um, first off, I'm going to grab a Fasna 820 number 14. This is a nice little hook to tie on. So, oh, I didn't even start my thread. How about that? So let's get this started back here in the front. Let's give us a nice little thread base to tie on, make sure nothing slips around. This is the number 14, so good size to start on. All right, we're going to get our shell back in first. We are going to go with the fine UV flashback from Sibai. I really love this stuff. Um, I'm going to show you why here in a second. It comes in a really nice range of colors. We're actually going to use this on two of our patterns tonight. But this is the ultraviolet. This is basically clear with an ultraviolet. So I can get the color of the dubbing, but give that nice hue. And the reason I like it like this is because I can cut my own size. So we're just going to go ahead and cut a thin strip. Nothing too thick. There we go. And that might be a little thick. That's all right. We're going to get this started, get my thread to where it's twisting together correctly. Boop. Hey, Dad. Hey, man. All right. Know what you're doing? I think so. <laughs> if I don't, it's your fault. I know. All right, so we'll get that tied on there. Come to the front. Pick our wire. This is something we do have coming out with soon. Uh, this is our color wire from Sibai. This is on order, so we're going to be adding this to the market. Um, pretty excited about this stuff. Just get a nice piece there. Tie that in. What I'm going to do, because I don't want to crunch the back end of my shell back, is I'm going to tie it on the far side of the hook. So that when I go to wrap it, I'm not wrapping the very first wrap, trying to force it over the shell back. That'll help me uh, keep my shell back on center and not cross it. All right. See you tomorrow. See you, Dad. So let's get started. We're going to do light rainbow, which is the classic rainbow that everybody knows. Especially for their sow bugs and stuff. And this stuff is just really nice. Good. Buggy. So you can tell we do have some length to it, not crazy long. But it's a really pleasant to work with. And as you can tell, I'm not waxing this. I'm not putting it in a loop. I'm literally just twisting it on. It's the material that we use sticks really, really well. Oop, I don't want to hit the camera. So we'll get that started. That up and we'll just twist it down. And you can see that's just sticking really, really nice. No need to uh, loop or wax it, though if you want to, don't hold it against you. All right, now we'll take this guy, fold that over. Here we go. Oh, 
Yeah, your real starting to rain out there. I can hear it. All right, we'll give that a trim. Pull the hair back so we don't tie it down. There we go. Now, this is why I put this on the far side. My first wrap, I can control it, gets into my dubbing, and just goes right on top. Now on this guy, you'll notice there's no bead, no weight. I'll usually fish this as a uh, a high water bug when I don't put weight on it, meaning I'll fish something real heavy down low, stick this up high, gets a little higher in the water column. You also see I've got a larger head on this. That is okay because I'm going to make my hot spot bead, and I'm just going to put just a touch of this. Now this is the scud orange. Real quick, this is one of the things we did with some of our brighter colors. Same brightener, different base. This is a white base. This is a gray base. And you can tell how much that really dirtied that up. I, uh, I really like that. Because uh, it gives me some options. And I can tie them together and get kind of this really bright spot in a nice, dirty, dark spot. So we're just going to kind of twist that down. Make sure it's nice and tight. Build our orange little top head. Try not card in the eye. We'll do a half hitch on the first one. We don't have a bead. There we go. That'll keep it from sliding over the eye because this is a down eye scud hook. One, two, three. And that'll secure that. Boop. Nice little rainbow saw bug. Resin wise, got a couple options here. I'm, I'm using Rage Zap. Um, if you want to have some fun, you can take some Solar Res colored resin and put a dab on there too, just to kind of even brighten it up some more. I'm I'm gonna stay away from that. I'm gonna go ahead and take this. Give my I'm gonna angle this a little more. That way it doesn't just go right to the eye of the hook. What I like about the super thin is it's going to soak right into that dubbing head too. Please check your DM. Definitely will hooked on the fly too. There we go. Ta-da. Quick little pattern. I really like that one. Let's go ahead and do another one. I'm going to do an orange one just because I can. It's a quick, easy bug. I got plenty of time. As you can tell, I've got my South Fork product magnet fly holder there. This is the duo, but I've been cranking away on some, uh, some scuds for an upcoming trip. So let's go ahead and get another one started here. Also, one thing that when I'm tying scud patterns, I'll look at is my hook selection. Um, I do like a good strong hook, but if I'm doing these higher water ones, I do like a lighter wire. Um, and that's just because I want it to float more closer to the surface. I'm going to go ahead and cut this a little thinner this time. Again, this is the UV Find flashback from Sibai. And I prefer sheets just because then I can really make my own uh, own size. Because I use it from everything from larger shrimp up to bigger scuds down to teeny tiny little things. How's it going, newcomers? What you guys up to? Again, if you guys got questions or anything, feel free to ask them. Uh, we're just tying some some bugs with a new dubbing we got going out that we have released, actually. We released it this earlier this week, and that is our new Scudlicious dubbing. Did one with the light rainbow. I think I'm actually going to grab a... Yeah, see the, uh, 
Let's see the brown rainbow. <laughs> Hi from Chile. Well, hello there. How's it going? So, again, this is another rainbow, but instead of a, a white base to get that lightness, this is a brown base. So this really darkens it down quite a bit. And we're just going to go ahead and uh, bring our thread back forward because it's a bigger bug. I do want to have that back and forth. But again, the reason I love this stuff is it twists right down. I don't need any wax. Um, it's a very sticky dubbing. As far as when you twist it, it's just going to twist right down. Just wrap it on down and not have to worry about it too much. Because I'm not going to put an orange spot on this one, I did not go, did not leave as much room in the front. So again, I'm just going to pull this forward, tie it down right over top. Close trim, make sure it's good and secure. I'm gonna do a little half hitch because it is a down eye and they like to slide sometimes. So again, wires on the far side. We have the material in MU. Yes, you do. We're gonna wrap this up just like the other one. And if you want to give these a good brush out, you can. I'm not going to because I can't find my brush. <laughs> Two, three, four, five, six. There I go. And I'm just going to give it one, two, three, four. Boom. There we go. And this stuff brushes out really like I can I can grab it and just pull it right down. And it just goes right out. It picks out really nice. It's not gonna come undone on you. So we just give that a little, little glue secure. And if you want to, you can paint the whole back. Um, I'll do that sometimes with a colored resin. I'll leave a solid color resin over top of it, but I will sometimes paint them down. Just gives it a little extra strength. Right, over here. Okay, next one, we're actually gonna do a, a little bit of a different pattern. We're gonna go into a stonefly, which means we gotta put the 14s away and grab an eight. So, Stonefly guys, this is my all-time favorite Stonefly hook. This is a Daiichi 1730. This is a number eight. And I forgot the bead. Don't freak out with the bead size. I want this puppy to be on the bottom. Um, this is my one of my chuck and duck nymphs. So bead-wise, yeah, that is a tungsten brass metallic bead in a 4.6 mil. Don't hit yourself. Okay, I'm going to keep the brown rainbow out because I do want that. Um, before we get started, also, we need some lead just to add some body and some more weight because where I live, well, it's um, – Water moves quick, and you get some deep holes, and bottom sinking flies are kind of a nice, nice thing to have. If you want to, and you don't want to use lead, you can put a secondary bead on. Um, it does work. It gets expensive when you do that, because just remember, you are fishing two beads, not one. So sometimes I'll fish 
two. Sometimes I'll just do one. Um, I'm going to do just enough wraps to. Sven, man, how's it going? Oh, by the way, Sven, I do have a uh, collection of this stuff headed to you tomorrow. All right, so I got that guy down. Now what I'm going to do is create a stop behind the thread. Actually, I'm going to go to a little bit thicker thread because I'll cover that better. I've got a six out in my raid zap bobbin here. And if you notice, this is a little shorter than last time. It's because I've switched out the nose for a little, little, little one. Just some hidden voice, man. Nope, this stuff's on the house, bud. This is promo stuff, man. This is on you or for you. So let's get the thread covered. And let's bring this back here. All right, let's get. Okay, so we have our rainbow colors. We have some scud colors. We also did some really natural tones. This is straight brown. We also have a hair's ear in this. So you guys, if you want to do other types of nifts, you can definitely do it. Um, we're going to come out with some more colors in this, but we went with 15 to get us started because uh, we kind of figured this would be pretty popular when it kicked off, and it has been. Um, so, and again, as you can tell, I just got to twist it. It just stays there. It ain't going to come undone on me. It's just, it's right there. All right, bud. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely post it. Jump on and watch it, man. And let me know what you think when you get some. Um, okay, next. Because I want some bigger legs on this. It is a stonefly. I am going to go to our stripped turkey biots. This stuff is awesome. Because I want some really nice long legs. I want a long abdomen. So I get shorter stuff down here. The fur further I go up, the longer it gets. I'm going to go right to the middle because that's what I want. You can use goo for this if you want to, but because I want the legs to have more presence. Make this easy. I'm just going to cut this guy right in half. There we go. Oh, yeah. Got to find out where a skunk is living in my backyard and set some traps. <laughs> Man, I, I know your pain. Uh, we, the house got sprayed the other day, I think, because I walked by the side of the house and it shrieks. Oh, I plucked three. That's okay. I'll use it. All right. So I got these guys. Again, I'm going to put them back to back. And... I'm going to use the dubbing ball I created as a separator. There we go. One secure wrap, two secure wraps. Make sure they're in position and tie them down. Boop, there we go. Yeah, that one turned on me, but that's all right. It's not too bad, actually. Now, I'm going to wrap these up to the front <clears throat> and fold them back because that's going to give me some, some depth. It's going to add some bulk to the bug, which is what we want. They might be a little long, so we'll just take these and we'll trim them just shy of coming back to the tail. There we go. Make sure they're good and wrapped down. Come back forward. We're going to tie in a wire. You can use a flat wire for this if you want. I'm just going to stick with the round wire I pulled out. Here we go. And I am going to do a full brown body. 
So I'm gonna tie this on. I'm gonna tie it on a little thick because you can brush this stuff out and get this really nice buggy brushed out stonefly bug, which is just absolutely awesome. Okay, a couple wraps to start. Get a nice twist going. Wrap that down. I'm going to come up to where the hook starts to bend down. Stop. Come back halfway. And come forward. Giving my fly some, some bulk. Next, I'm going to take some brown pheasant. You can use, now this is something you can use anything you want to. You can use a uh, flashback. You can do whatever. I'm going to go with some brown pheasant. This is a side tail. Um, sadly, pheasant has been a little difficult to get this year. But we want a shell back, so I'm going to need a good amount. Cut that. Tie that down. Make sure it's going to make a good covered shell back. It is. Okay. Now I'm right there. I'm back up to my dubbing. I'm going to go back to my turkey biot and grab another one because I already have one peeled off. Now, again, I'm going to take it and go back to back. This will make them separate a little easier. There we go. I was actually put them back to back. Why it's giving me so much problem, I don't know. There we go. You'll know when they're separated because they will naturally flare off. All right, so I'm going to push these in, and I'm going to go right to where the back of the dubbing starts. I'm going to tie these down. Again, going all the way forward. It helped cover the lead. Give me a little bulk. That's okay. I'm going to come back here. I'm going to switch over to the rainbow brown. And I do a little color of that, excuse me. I'm going to start with just this nice little ball right here. Come forward. Now this is a, you can do a leg, you can not do a leg. It's entirely up to you. When I get to a larger size, I like to have a leg on them. So this is a like pearl bronze. We get, um, yeah, Wapsie flies. This is their barred sand. Stuff's awesome. I took one. I cut it in half. I'm going to turn it so that when I go up, the barring is facing outward. Or inward. I guess that's how it wanted to sit down. There we go. And we'll take the next one. Go right in. I will be trimming these. And we'll just kind of pull them back into place. And just tie them down. Come forward. Not all the way. A little space up front. We're going to take our rainbow, our brown rainbow, just to kind of give the full fly some symmetry, change up the color a little bit. We're going to really fill up that abdomen. We want that, that nice big spot. Go in front. So we'll finish this one, and then we're going to go into a shrimp pattern. So, all right, we'll get a nice coloring of dubbing in the front. That'll help kind of kick that leg out a little bit. 
Oh, we never wrapped our wire. What an idiot I am. Huh. Well, we'll fix that. There was no wire on that bug. It's a wireless bug. We're going to go with that. <laughs> All right. I'm going to take this. I'm going to tie it down. Make sure it's spread out properly over the top. There we go. There we go. We got our nice shell back. Again, I'm going to go to the Turkey Biots. Oh, I got a one that's got a broken tip in between. That's, that'll happen there, birds. Just cast that one aside. We'll pull one more. There we go. And we gotta make sure they're back to back. Yep. Ha ha. All right, and then we're gonna do the same thing like we did before with the bias. We're just gonna split it around. It's getting caught in the dubbing, so we'll just pinch that down and voila. We're gonna make these, try about to get them about the same length as the back. I'll do two wraps, because then I can kinda manipulate where they're gonna go. If you want, you can have the, the rubber leg kinda push over. So bring them down just a hair. Kind of just boop. All right, I'm gonna one, two, make sure it's secured. Come in, give a little cut, a little cut, and just to kind of cover that front section up, we'll put just a little more dubbing down. Again, I'm gonna match that thorax. And there we go. Okay, trimming these guys. You can make them come down or over top if you want to. That's entirely up to you. That's really going to determine where you're going to put that biot because that biot will interfere with that leg. So I'm going to come forward and I'm probably going to go back like that. And I'm going to trim these. A little shorter, so probably kind of towards the back of the dubbing. And these ones, I'll leave a little longer. I'll go right to the back bend of the hook. All right. Now, because we do have a soft shell on that, I'm going to take the thin, and I'm going to do that for my thread knot, because that will soak in really well. Or this is the uh, the super thin. That's going to soak in there. I'm going to hit that first. Now I'm going to take the medium. It's just a little thicker. It uh, it'll soak in really well, but this will also give me a a hardened shell back. There we go. That's hard. Yep. And sometimes you'll get these little drops because they'll get into the dubbing. I guess to keep those, peel them off. And voila. But you can definitely see the potential of how buggy that stonefly can get. So. Next, we're going to go to a, even a different type of water. So let's clean up a little bit. We'll put some of this away. And we're going to bring out some brighter colors.
in our oranges. So, real quick, I'm going to switch out a thread color because I don't want to use black on an orange bug, especially a shrimp. And if you're noticing my thread choice is Lagarton um, and UTC. I really love the Lagarton stuff. It is actually becoming my uh, my go-to thread. So for this guy, we're actually going to go to a partridge. Uh, this is the saltwater shrimp. This is the number 10. This is a bug I would use in Puget Sound. You can tie it bigger and go down south if you want. And I'm forgetting my tungsten bead. You can do eyes if you want to, um, and a lead body. That works really well. I, want, I fish this to get down. This bead is going to be a little large for this guy, but it'll really sink, which is good. And I like brown because it does give me a nice little spot of reference. And that guy's going to sit right there. So normally I wouldn't go this big on a bead, but it's what I got sitting on the table. So I'm going to start my thread kind of towards the back. And first off, I'm going to do is get a little bit of dubbing. Now, I'm not going to twist this down, but I want to make sure I get a good mixed amount of the wool that's in it and the tri level fiber. Get this little puff going here. We can take that. And taper trim it. There we go. This is a nice little tail. And that's with the scud dubbing. It's not super long, but it actually gives you some nice length. So, all right, we got that down. Let's grab some legs. Bright orange. This is going to be a really bright fly, so of course we want some really bright legs. And these are barred, which is really nice. Again, we are going to cut this in half. And I'm going to make two of them long on the side right there. Just give it a quick tie down, two, three, four, five. Fold these two back. There we go. What that's going to do, that little dubbing ball is going to give it some, some life between it, but it's also going to spread those legs out, as you can tell. They're really pushing around. I'm going to trim these down just a little bit. Don't need to be that long. There we go. All right, now I'm going to take a little bit of dubbing. And I'm going to fill where that bead's going to slide over. So it doesn't just kind of push everything back. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to push that. I'll push it in and test it. All right. And I'm going to want to fill that. Make it a little bigger. There we go. Bring my thread forward. Tie it off. And glue it. Take my 
Ben. Good evening from White Mountain, Arizona. Hey, JMZ, how's it going? All right, got that in there. It's our super thin. So this is the back half of our shrimp. We're going to hit this. Wow, that's bright. I know you can't quite see it in the camera, but that's I can see it in my eyes. <laughs> All right, so we'll push this back here. Get it nice and secured in there. And start a thread up here. I'm going to want that wire. Depending, do I want to use brown or do I want to use gold? Brown's going to give more segmentation. The rose gold is going to disappear more. Let's give a more natural look. We're going to go with the rose gold. Let's come up here. Let's tie this down. Again, I screwed. I made a boo-boo. I tied my wire on the wrong side. Now, I'm pretty strict on this, um, even with myself, is when I do my wire. If I'm going to be tying down a shell back, uh, especially, to, especially using wire to do it, I need to have it on the right side. Um, and what I consider the right side for wire is the opposite side of the hook. So if I'm gonna wrapping this way over the top uh, with my wire, I need to have it on the side where it's gonna go underneath first. That way when it comes over, it's not just ripping everything down to the side. Okay, I've started with this, our scud orange. And I'm actually gonna do two colors in the front. I want this to be fairly uh, buggy, so I'm going to make it nice and thick. This will allow me to really brush it out later when I need to. So that's the scud orange. Now I'm going to go to our shrimp orange. The only difference in this this has a white base and this is a gray base. We stuck with natural bases to give it more variety. That's why we have three different rainbows on our scuds, on our pinks and our oranges. We actually have two, one that's really dirty, one that's really bright. Um, as you can tell, this is definitely much brighter than what's on there. And I'm laying this on really, really thick. That's okay. Thick is okay when you're going to brush it out. Oh, excuse me. Whew. That soda's kicking my butt. Okay, so we have two different colors there. Let's take this. I'm going to take you know, this because I don't have my other tool with me. And use that as a hook. Because even though I'm in the warehouse, I don't want to walk to the warehouse to get my bodkin. Now this is really brushing out around it. It's exactly what I want. It help kind of cover up that bead. Okay, we're gonna go back to this again, and we're gonna make a little thicker cut.
to go on top. There we go. Now I'm also going to point this a little bit. I'm actually going to go kind of a squared point here. Then I'll come in and even her out. There we go. I'll place that right on top. Just like that. I'm going to tie it down first. Trim it. And wrap my wire. I'm going to come down. The reason I like to do that is because then I can come right over top. Now I'm coming right over top. I'm not trying to pinch anything down. But one of the worst looking shrimps I think I've ever tied. But it's also been a few years since I've tied these. Six, get that secured. Now you can use a tungsten bead or you can use dumbbell eyes and lead or however you guys want to do it. And I've done both tungsten beads and I've done lead with the bead chain eye. And we're just going to take a little bit of this and just kind of cover that thread head right there. A little bit. Here we go. Okay, for this we are gonna again do our thin on the thread. Do that needle pause. Marcus, do not make me break out what I did earlier. Ooh, it's bright. All right, now this is going to have some softness to it, so what we're going to do, if those two are super thin, we're going to take some medium. Actually, first off, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take, because we're going to play around here a little bit. We're going to take some Solaris orange, do a thin layer on top. Hopefully, I don't have a out a breakout to this but we're gonna do a coating of this over top you'll really stiffen up that shell back And this is their uh, fluorescent orange UV clear. That just makes it blend in well. That's really cool. Yeah, the UV shell back just kind of that ultraviolet hue goes right through it, but you get this nice orange coating on top. You get the brightness of everything underneath, but it kind of dulls it just a little bit. So the top looks duller, the bottom is nice and bright. And uh, get that nice mix. Okay, we're good. Okay. How long about we got 45 minutes. All right, I got time for probably one more or so. I think. Yeah. Oh, I think I am going to go to. What we got here? What do I have on the table that I can use? 
Boom. This is a Fasno 810, number 14. I think we'll do a snub nosed. There's your. Oh, we got that started. We'll go ahead and we'll just use the, the bright thread. We'll give it a nice hot spot. All right, we'll tie that in. We're going to come back here. We need some tail. Oh, look at this. I've got some muskrat gray. Yes, we do have these in stock. We got a bunch in and we dyed them muskrat um, and natural because muskrat is basically our best seller other than natural. All right. Well, we want a nice big puffy tail. There we go. Take a nice tail. And we will start off by just getting a couple wraps. Just enough to shorten that, and then we'll secure it. We'll bring that forward, and we're going to stop it right where the body's going to change. We need wire, so we'll go with the brown. Now, because I'm not doing a show back on the back, I don't have to worry about it being on the right side of the hook. And let's grab the hairs here. So this is the Scudlicious dubbing in hairs here. Very natural, very golden tone. Uh, this is just a really nice, dirty looking natural color. And uh, we're just going to give a nice coating of this. Here we go. Twist it down. Wrap that up to our stopping point. Right there. Take our wire. We're going to take this and just kind of cut those really long fibers. I want it to be buggy, but I don't want them bigger than the bug itself. And we will do our segmentation. Two, three, four, and five. Tie that off. Twist the wire off. Make sure everything is secured and I don't have a lump of thread that's going to come undone. Take more hairs here. Of course, we want a good shell back on this. So a little thicker is not going to hurt. And we'll actually turn those around using for the legs. Just like that. Here we go. A little further back. Perfect. All right. Now let's do, you know, let's give it a dirty hot spot. Let's take a, just a hint of orange. Just a real small amount. We're going to tie that right at the back. And then we'll go back to our hairs here. This is all with Scudlicious, so it's nice short fiber dubbing, not shorter. And uh, get a nice base there. Make sure we have room in the front, pull this down. Then we want to make sure we're not doing this going over the eye. So we're just going to make it so that thread doesn't slide near as much. 
And I'm going to come back with some of the legs for the legs and well, four legs, you know. And we'll just give it a quick yep, to tie down. Okay, I'm not over the not over. That's good. There we go. One, two, three. All I'm gonna need. And we're just gonna snip. There we go. I'm gonna come underneath. Do a Dab of resin. Let that sit. That'll soak right in. Hit it with the light. And now I've got a hair's ear pattern. It's got this nice little orange collar in the middle of the bug. I should like that. That's kind of cool. But there we go. Good buggy diving, guys. All righty, guys. It has been 52 minutes. I am going to call it a night. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Again, if you are interested in it, check out our new Scudlicious dubbing. Yes, it's incorrectly spelled. We know it. It's intentional. A little inside joke. But it comes in 15 colors. It is up on the website. We are going to put a full color chart up there. Contact your local shop. Um, and get yourself some of that Scudalicious Devon, man. It's going to, we know it's going to be a good one. Everyone's going to like this stuff. So, alrighty, guys. You guys have a good night. Stay safe out there, and we'll see you next week.